Um, as was mentioned, uh, my background is uh, in architecture and planning, uh, and so I tend to view the world uh, through, through that lens um, with the question always of, of how should we build? How should we live uh, in our cities, in our homes, in our offices? And what is the net impact of those decisions around how we should live, how we should plan? Um, recognizing that our buildings and our communities are the largest artifacts that humanity makes, um, that this is the single largest manifestation of our creativity and the ecological and social footprints of those decisions are vast, and becoming more so. Um, and as David mentioned, um, this is uh, the, the entire planet's ability to not only sustain ourselves but other species is being impacted by the decisions around our, our urban planning paradigms and, and the infrastructure uh, contained within. Um, back in, if you go back just a few decades, and I'm going to just give my remarks in context of a timeline, um, green building as a topic um, hasn't been around very long. Um, it originally started as a framing around energy conservation uh, in response to rising uh, energy prices, but thankfully as a, as a topic began to be uh, broadened. Uh, people began to realize that we need to have issues of habitat, issues of water uh, use and, and, and pollution to air and water and soil. Uh, people began to be concerned about their own health with sick building syndrome and toxins in the environment. And so the definition of green building began to broaden. And uh, thanks to programs like LEAD that many people on the, on the line probably know, an agenda began to be developed around building more responsibly. Um, my belief, as we've crossed now um, past 7 billion people, and as we continue to rapidly urbanize, and soon, within just a couple decades, add another billion people uh, to the planet, all of whom need to be housed, and they need communities, and they need, they need cities, and they require services. Um, it's time to think much deeper than what traditionally has been considered around green building, and that we have to fundamentally reconsider the act of creation uh, with with all of the uh, things that we create, not only uh, buildings themselves, but all the thousands of products that go into buildings. And so with this as, as um, the urgency uh, that we face, we launched this program, the Living Building Challenge, to begin to codify uh, uh, answers around a series of important questions around what success should look like. And ultimately, we look to nature for definition of success. How does nature build? How do other species build? And what is the net impact that they have? And without exception, uh, life creates conditions for life, and we are, in fact, the only exception. Um, we, we create um, less uh, optimal conditions for life the way we're currently building. So if we were to turn this on its head in terms of how we design and build and use nature's principles to guide our design, what would that look like? Um, how would we design with current solar energy rather than fossil fuels? How would we work within the water balance of our sites how would we not spoil the nest, so to speak, introducing toxins into our habitat and into uh, communities uh, that serve us? Um, how would we do uh, everything that we do in terms of building communities while supporting a living economy rather than a destructive economy that merely extracts resources for uh, short-term benefit? Um, this is the framing that I think fits into what David began to talk about with, with architecture. And this is ultimately what we call regenerative design and designing living buildings and living communities. Imagine buildings that got all of their energy from the sun, that got all their water from what they could capture and, and treated the water inside uh, the, the structures and released it purer than, than when, uh, when it was uh, collected. Imagine buildings that were free of toxic chemicals that were built locally with, uh, with people in the community that understood uh, what they were doing and appreciated the impacts that they were having uh, in their community. This is the vision of the Living Building Challenge and it's very exciting that as a philosophy and as an approach we've moved from mere philosophy to actual projects and we now have living building projects cropping up all over the world that are really changing what people believe is possible 
Uh, here in Seattle, uh, we have the Bullet Center that Dennis Hayes pioneered, who's going to speak in a little bit, um, that really is a revolution around uh, office buildings. Here we have a project that, in the least sunny city in the United States, gets all of its energy on a net basis from the sun. It uses composting toilets on six floors and doesn't need a sewer connection. Very inspiring. And the fact that we have, you know, 250 other projects like the Bullet Center now proving that this vision of being one of, uh, of all, you know, one of all species that knows finally again how to build uh, in concert with natural systems is very exciting. The, the final message I'll just say as encouragement, um, you know, it, what started out as an idea has now been proven and my belief is we have all the tools, all the technologies, all the know-how to completely transform our cities and our buildings, our homes and offices if we desire it. And this living regenerative future is possible now. Thank you.